Okay. <clears throat> Welcome. <clears throat> Welcome everyone. Let's get going. Ugh, hate this. Welcome everyone to the first session of OAuth. It, if somebody can close the door at the end there in the back. Thank you all. Um, okay, um, we have three sessions. This is the first session. We have one hour today, so let's get going. First, um, thanks to uh, Philip and uh, Hannes for taking notes. And let's get going. This is the knot well. Please um, make sure you are familiar with the, with the knot well. It governs everything that we do at the ITF here. So hopefully you're already familiar with this. If not, make sure you get familiar with this. Uh, meeting tips, please uh, um, use um, um, the application to sign into Meet Echo. Uh, that's a way we know that you are in the room. Uh, we, we don't have uh, blue sheets anymore. Um, and um, it allows you to kind of get into the queue and, and ask questions or provide feedback. Okay, so I want to start on uh, uh, in memory for a friend that we recently lost. Um, Vittorio, as many of you know, he, he was uh, really an identity guru, identity icon, and hair product experts too. I didn't benefit from that, but <laughs> <laughs> he was uh, an amazing author. He authored a number of books and two RFCs, one of them just recently uh, with the OAuth group. He was an amazing educator. He knew how to simplify things and, and explain things to, to people. Um, and he had tons of videos that if you can Auth0 has tons of uh, identity videos that you can go on and listen to Vittorio explaining things in, in gory details. It's just amazing. Um, and he has also a, a podcast that he talks about identity. He was a mentor, he was a colleague, and he was a friend to me and many of us here. Uh, we miss him and uh, um, rest in peace, uh, my friend. And yeah, let's take a, maybe a moment to remember him. Just a few, few seconds of silence. Okay, thank you. Um, I'll open it for anybody that wants to say any words. Yeah. So feel free. Uh, I didn't know Vittorio for very long or very well, but um, he was such an inspiration for me uh, coming into this space, learning about it and not just in terms of how he did the work, uh, but how he lived. And I think uh, for me, Vittorio was an inspiration in life and, uh, and in the work that we did. So I just want to acknowledge that. Thanks, Peter. Okay. I've uh, known Vittorio for a couple of years, um, but it was about 18 months ago at Identiverse. Um, I sat in the bar with Vittorio and told him how much I hated my job <laughs> and I wanted to do something different. I wanted to get involved in standards. And he was the one who pushed me to write a job description, say what I wanted to do and chase it. And that's why I'm sitting here today and sitting in all of these meetings. So thank you, Vittorio. Thanks, Dean. Okay, go ahead, Mike.
This is what I'd like to hear. Buongiorno everybody and welcome. <laughs> My name is Vittorio Bertocci. Yeah. Okay, thank you all. Um, just a quick reminder. <clears throat> uh, Noncom is still looking for feedback. If you're not familiar with the Noncom, uh, it's the committee that selects our leadership here at the ITF. It's really important that we get the, the feedback of the community to be able to select the, the leaders, uh, the next leaders of, uh, of the ITF. So please take the time to provide feedback on people that you interacted with. Um, just comment about an OAuth week group office hours. We have a biweekly open office hour every other Wednesday. So at one time we had some WebEx issues um, and we used different um, conferences to, to do that. Oh, sorry. So George, sorry, G George, are you? I, I, sorry. Okay, sorry. So, and, and so what we're gonna do, like we probably already canceled all of them. If, if you see still that, uh, that in, on your calendar, please delete it. We'll send a new one just to make sure everyone got the latest because there are lots of confusion there. Okay. Okay, quick update uh, on what we've accomplished recently. Uh, the, the ITF published the two really great and important documents. Um, the first one is the, the DPOP document, uh, which, was, which was amazing work from the authors, Daniel, Brian, John, Torsten, Mike, and David. Uh, and uh, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Thank you all. And the other one is, <laughs> Vittorio's last uh, and, and with, with Brian um, about step-up authentication. Um, again. <laughs> and, and thank you for the whole work group because uh, th these couldn't have happened without all the help and review and comment and, and, um, and support of the whole work group. Um, Brian, did you want to say something? Okay. Um, security BCP, we finally pushed this to, to the IESG. Um, so hopefully um, that will progress soon and we'll unlock the one after it, which is the, the job response for OAuth token inspection, which has been waiting for a long time. Uh, and more recently we adopted three new working group documents. Um, SD JOT based verifiable credentials, attestation based client authentication, and OAuth status list. Um, these are uh, new um, documents that we adopted since the last uh, the last meeting. Um, so today's agenda: um, we have um, we want to allocate the first thirty minutes to talk about the charter. Uh, in the context of uh, what we saw with, the, with those three, three documents that we have ad adopted here. Uh, and uh, after that, um, uh, Christina and, and uh, Daniel will be talking about SDJOT. Okay. So uh, I'd like to ask um, Yaron if you can give us a quick update on the whimsy. Um... Oh, good. Yes. Uh... Go ahead. Thank you, Rifat. Uh, Joe Salloway and myself chaired uh, the Whimsy Buff that just ended before this session. And I think many of the people in this room uh, were there, but for those who weren't, uh, we had a well attended uh, buff about uh, workload identity. Uh, we, there were quite a few technical presentations and some presentations that are higher level about what we uh, plan to do. 
we got very uh, strong feedback that we need to tighten the charter to define a much more specific charter, including the deli specific deliverables uh, of what we would like to accomplish first. Um, we will obviously take this uh, feedback back to the list and uh, we will probably have a robust discussion about what we want to do in, uh, in workload uh, identity. Please, if you're anywhere at all into workload identity, which is a very, a very interesting topic, please join the mailing list and contribute to shaping uh, the charter of the, of the working group to be. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, Yaron. Um, Hannes, do you want to give an update? Yeah, uh, this morning, Pam and I had the, chaired the BOF for the SPICE uh, sort of proposal, and Roman helped out to, uh, to run the show because Pam was uh, remote. We also had a very good uh, attendance. I was actually very positively surprised, more than 100 uh, 50 people online, uh, even in the packed room. So we had good discussions, um, also good support, lots of interest in, in doing the work, uh, that the ITF is the right place. Um, we have to do a little bit of fine tuning or discussions on the charter, uh, which will uh, follow afterwards. I will have a, a chat with Roman during this week to, to see what the immediate next steps are and uh, obviously keep the uh, sort of the group and the audience informed about um, how we can actually get there. So, so it's, uh, I think, quite a positive experience. So thank you all for those who attended. Okay, thanks, Hannes. Okay, so <clears throat> let's talk about that open discussion about the charter. So if I go back to, to those documents that we that we've just recently adopted that the rationale for adopting those documents was that these documents are a profile of um, a jot document that was defined in the authway group so we felt that it's in the scope of the OAuth with group as it is today defined as uh, with the, in the context of the charter, right? But there are some questions about this and uh, we want to kind of have an open discussion here. We don't have any slides prepared for this. We just want to get that feeling of people on what do they think? Like, is it really in the scope based on whatever uh, that the charter today is talking about, or is it maybe the charter needs some tweaking or maybe a major reach, a rehash of the, the charter? So we just want to get that feedback from, from the work group and, and see how we can make sure that the work group charter is well defined to cover those documents. Any, anybody has any thoughts about this? Justin Richer here. Um, so I do think that it might be the wrong question to ask, uh, how do we change the charter to fit these documents that we've adopted? And instead we should be asking, what is the charter? What, what really should be the remit of this working group? You know, what, what is the, the reach of this group uh, as we would see it? Uh, especially if there is new work that is uh, spinning up in the IETF that might be a more focused home for, uh, for some of the work that OAuth has, uh, has taken on so far. I know that's not a popular thing to, to say in this group. I, mm. Oh, no. You, yeah, 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 Hannah says it's totally fine. Um, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll let him take all the flaming arrows then. Um, but regardless, I think that that's something that uh, we as a group really need to question. Like, what is what is our identity as a working group? We've been around a very long time now by, uh, by IETF working group standards. And uh, we've done a lot of really, really great stuff. Um, but I would be hard-pressed to succinctly explain to somebody 
what the OAuth working group actually does today because we're not building OAuth. OAuth was done a decade ago plus. So we've done extensions to OAuth. We've done Extension. stuff that we're not just doing extensions to OAuth. Mm -hmm. SDJOT is not an extension to OAuth. Sure. JOT's not even an extension to OAuth. It's not. Yeah, true. But, so, but so there's a lot of I, I, yeah, but but it, <laughs> but there's there's a lot of things that are uh, that we've done here because we've done something that's kind of like it here, and that's that's kind of the strongest argument that's been given for a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not saying that we rip out all of the documents that we've adopted and ship them off elsewhere or something like that, but I do think that if we're thinking about what is the charter of this working group, we need to. In, instead of looking at it in terms of how do we stretch the charter around the things that we've said that we're going to do, we need to figure out what it is that we're actually interested on in doing. And if that is extensions to OAuth, then what does it mean to be an extension to OAuth? You know, how far does that net cast? Um, and I don't think that that's necessarily an easy and succinct answer. And I think that there's going to be a lot of back and forth coming to, uh, coming to that uh, sort of conclusion. But I think it's something that we have to do. Okay. Thanks, Justin. Mike. Mike Jones, I'm going to take a fairly pragmatist point of view that uh, de facto, the OAuth working group is doing a lot of good work and continues uh, finishing good work. And I don't think any particular course correction is needed. Um, we're having well-informed adoption discussions about all the work that's adopted or not. And uh, I'm happy with where we are. Thanks, Mike. Brian. Hey, uh, so maybe said this before on the mail list, but I want to reiterate sort of my own justification for the SDJOT work in particular being within the remit of the OAuth working group, basically just based on precedent and history that JOT itself was developed within this group um, and is general purpose token format that's been seen wide, widespread usage and doing the SD JOT, which is basically an extension or I don't know what you call it, but it, it's building on top of that, the JOT work directly, I think makes a lot of sense. Um, just based on historical precedent to, to continue to do within this group. Um, I say that uh, basically agreeing with everything Justin said, but wanting to, wanting to continue um, that work here and, and under the assumption too that it, I, I think it's much closer to being done than, than being starting. And, and I don't want to see um, that work derailed Didn't say that very well, but that's what I got. So, so, <clears throat> Brian. I, yeah, sorry. So, your thinking is that you think w maybe we need to kind of work on that charter to make it clearer or expand it, or like what's what's the the right course of action from here? Uh, I yeah, I don't know exactly. I know my statement didn't really help with course of action, but I mm -hmm. I think having not even probably read the charter recently. I don't know the exact words in it, which is probably a mistake, but have have guided my thoughts about the appropriateness of work based on just prior work that the, the working group's done here. Um, and I, I wouldn't necessarily question the the new stuff that's going on as well, but um, I don't know, I, I guess I was just trying to reiterate my own my own thoughts about one one particular document that I'm invested in being here which I think is appropriate and why and, and okay. um, encouraging us not to, to revisit things yeah. unnecessarily, I guess. Sorry, I've been up since 1.30, 1 o'clock my time here. So I'm less coherent than even usual. <laughs> Thanks, Ryan. Appreciate it. <laughs> Ori. Hi, Ori Steele. Um, so I know, I just like to, there we go. Um, it's web authorization, right? Get closer. Can't. 
it's, it's web authorization, yeah. right? So uh, the web is more than HTTP, and I think uh, authorization is more than Jose. And I think those are the dimensions of, of like inquiry that I have. I agree with uh, most of everything Brian and Justin have said. I don't think there's any reason, like the work that's done here is excellent. I don't think there's any reason to move work that's progressing excellently. But when you think about attracting new people, um, you should also think about repelling people to the other places when what they bring here is not for here. So, uh, you know, in the context of Cozy and Seabor, I think there's obvious places you would send them. Mm -hmm. In the context of HTTP, transports for authorization, you know, tokens or other transports, where, where do you send them? So that, that's the sort of, when I think about the web and the remit of this group, I think about what has the web become since we finished all the work and we just started only doing extensions on the parts of this that have done, have gone really well. It's not an answer. It's just, I, I think about especially the cozy Hosey dynamic as being a continual sort of piece that will come up here. And, and it is like CWTs weren't done here. Mm -hmm. JWTs were done here. Is that going to divide us forever? Yeah. yeah. That's so, the question that I have. So, so like in, in your mind, then from a chartering perspective, you don't seem to think that we need to charter as long as we maybe if we have new work that we think should go somewhere else, we direct it to that right place. Is that, is that what you're saying? If, if you're, if when people bring Seabor work here in particular, you know, OAuth status list in JWT format, uh, that seems great. OAuth status list in CWT format. Why don't you send that to where CWTs were made under the same argument that you do SD jot here? Cause this is where jots were made. Right. Okay. So, so newer folks, folks who are newer to IETF, that's the framework with which they approach where okay. am I supposed to bring my Seabor cozy thing? Mm -hmm. Personally, I find most of the advice that I'm looking for as I build Seabor and cozy structures actually here. So uh, I don't have a good answer to like how to solve that, but I think you, the next charter needs to give that answer to people when they read the charter. Got it. Thanks. Thanks, Ori. Rohan. Hi, Rowan May. Um, as a, you know, sort of pseudo outsider to this group, uh, I, I find the, it a little bizarre, just that jots got done here instead of in Jose. And uh, so, oh yeah, yeah, wow. Well. You know, I'm, 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 I'm not throwing stones. I'm just saying, you know, it seems weird. But, uh, I picked it up the stone. Uh, <laughs> what, what, um, so rather than picking up a stone, um, the, the thing that I'm observing is that the semantics, there's a lot of common semantics between, between you know, CWT and JOTS and between SD JOT and SD, SD JOT and SD, you know, Jose stuff, right? So, yeah, I just can't pronounce it CWT and I can't pronounce it COT either. It just doesn't seem right. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, what, I guess what I'm, what I'm saying is that um, the, having, a, having a place to discuss the semantics that are in common, regardless of the format, that seems like that would be a nice thing to have. And if we can't have that, then the, the next best thing would just be to document better what it is that we actually do in this group of people and maybe give it a different name. <laughs> Thanks. Um, Ron, I, I will answer the question about why was the JWT done here and, and also why the CWT was done in ACE. Um, the JSON web token was done here because it was the attempt to fill one of the gaps in the OAuth protocol because the access token wasn't uh, the format wasn't standardized and there were different formats being used and the expertise and the interest was in this group. Later, of course, we found out that 
people use the JWT for all sorts of other purposes, uh, which we at that time didn't envision. Like some of the uses are probably questionable, um, but <laughs> but that's what it is. The CWT, on the other hand, um, was an artifact of the attempt to create a new working group to uh, use OAuth in a in, in a constrained environment where we basically replaced uh, HTTP with co-op, uh, the CWD shrinked it down, uh, the, the JSON web token shrinked it down and encoded it in COSI and CBOR. And that's, that's why it ended up in ACE rather than here. Was that a good idea to do it in the other group? Hmm, I'm not entirely sure because the, the working group turned into a, everything that sounds remotely constrained is now in ACE, uh, but that's a, we can argue that another day. Did, did you want me to stay up here? Did you have a question? Or? No, I'm just oh, correcting okay. because you said you didn't know why this was done. It, it didn't uh, appear I, 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 to be was, useful, but it, there's actually a very good reasoning of why we did that. Uh, I, I, did, I didn't mean like that I didn't understand why, how that happened, okay. how that came about. It was more that why the ADs didn't say, why the ASG didn't say, just go do this in Jose or just go like make a new working group, you know. Like that's what I meant more as a sort of a semi-rhetorical question. I, I think if there's no uh, hard line because in some sense it's it's you can argue either way, right? Uh, why why things should go here or there? It's the same with working groups go belonging to different areas. Um, in any case, it's water under the bridge. So, but the the, the thing is, is semantics. It, it, like either we want to have something that has semantics as a separate thing, or we want to say what we actually do here. So to the Jose working group question, I was just checking the timeline. It was closed by the way. No. I think it's, it's my turn. I, I will um, say, yeah. am I audible? Yeah, thanks. Ahead, so I, I, I will say two things that I, I uh, that appear to be intention, but I, I think actually aren't. Um, so on the one hand, I think that there is a clear kind of demark um, that the, the, the OAuth scope has grown enough that there is a logical breakpoint that has emerged. Um, and I think Denis probably hit it uh, in the chat when, with the difference between the traditional OAuth model of roles and this three-party model that has, has come up more recently, um, the issuer holder verifier model. Um, I think you know, following up on the spice buff, you know, if that turns into something, that's probably a logical cut point to take some of the scope um, that OAuth has accreted in that three-party model and, and move it over there. Um, but I, I also agree with with Brian that we shouldn't slow things down here. So there, even you know, if there there is a little bit of you know scope beyond the breakpoint right now, we should keep that work going um, and, and moving and do it in OAuth for now. Um, while we figure out whether we're going to do a dedicated thing for the stuff beyond the breakpoint. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Richard. Uh, Manu. Yes, hi, Manu Fontaine, Hushmesh. I'm a newbie, so this may be a stupid question. I apologize in advance. Uh, I was looking for a group that does authentication. I believe this is the closest um, uh, that there is. And so uh, we we working for a few years. We've been working on an infrastructure leveraging confidential computing extensively. Um, we stumbled into an architecture that essentially reduces authentication of an entity to its own personal agent. So there's only one authentication uh, authority, if you want, or server. That server runs in a confidential computing machine, which means that it is verified, it is attested. Um, so it has a very high level of security and it can also be a uh, uh, it can it can convey a level of assurance to any other relying party that would like to rely on that uh, auth uh, authentication. And so my question is, uh, echoing a little bit what Ori was saying, uh, is this the right place? Is there another group? Where should we go with this new approach? Uh, how how do we socialize uh, this new this new vision? Thank you. Thanks, Manuel. I I think authentication is out of scope for the OAuth work group. It's mainly focused on authorization. It's an authorization framework. So yeah, we can discuss where that work should go in, in a different place, in a different 
context, maybe the sick, sick dispatch might be the right place, but uh, let, let's take this uh, offline. Mike. Mike Jones, I'm gonna go back to my pragmatist statements. Uh, often decisions are the result of the people involved in making the decisions. And having been there and tried to get uh, Jose to do JOT, Jim Shad was chair. He didn't want it. Didn't happen there. OAuth saw a need for it. OAuth did it. Um, kind of the same for how uh, did CWT end up in ACE? Uh, Jim was pretty influential in COSE where I thought it belonged. He didn't want it. it. You know, we found another home. This is the way things actually happen. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not saying that these statements are particularly actionable, but, you know, to Rohan's question, how did we end up with the decisions we made? It's because the people involved were influential and uh, shaped what the outcomes were, and I'm okay with all the outcomes. Okay. Thanks, Mike. Brian, did you want to say something? Yeah, thanks. Well, I'm not quite sure how to say it. We seem to be revisiting this sort of ongoing tension about whether some of these documents should live in a working group that doesn't yet exist and whether these that working group should be formed on a basis for having these documents. And I, I they're all legitimate questions. I don't quite know how to answer it other than maybe the, the more pragmatic take that, that there's work being done, people are interested in, in working on these things now. Um, yeah. And there's my dog, I apologize. I don't, I don't know how to add to it, but I, I do think that <laughs> there's been a lot of assumptions and, and maybe miscommunications about where things should or shouldn't be, as well as different motivations of people interested in, in getting work done, but also interested in potentially different outcomes or, or at least processes to those outcomes. Um, and I'm just rambling. So uh, I'll, I'll give the mic back to my dog. Thanks, Brian. Peter. I, I wonder, uh, I'm, oh. So one thought that comes up when I think about getting work done is making sure that you have the right people to do that work. And one of the things that's interesting about you know, people who participate in OAuth is that they also participate in many other identity aspects, right? So in some ways, uh, OAuth is an, uh, it wants a convenient or like the question of charter is perhaps less interesting than the fact that we have the right people here to get work done. Mm -hmm. yeah. And yeah. Uh, or at least I, I think we have to write, <laughs> but, um, you know, and so maybe, uh, you know, another way to look at this is um, if we had other working groups or another working group, or we felt the need to have this sort of uh, you know, disconnecting or breaking off work, as, as Richard's pointed out, um, you know, are we just going to have another working group with the same set of people, right? Mm -hmm. Is that actually... How, how do we become more efficient in how we use this community of people with expertise in this space if we do that or not? Okay, thanks, Peter. Anybody else has any comments, questions? Yeah, Roman. So, uh, yeah. Hi, this is Roman. I'll this is probably both as individuals AD because I don't know how to split this kind of feedback apart. Uh, so I actually learned some new words that I think the group has been using before, but I never realized the significance of that. I don't, I'm not sure whether it was Christina's presentation or is there kind of Justin in the spice bot. So I heard that on deck as I was trying to understand what the spice, uh, what the spice scope was, I heard there is, uh, what was it? Uh, it was about there's a token format or whatever was kind of the right word. There, there's the idea of kind of what's the language. And so that seems like here in this working group that we traffic, that's a jot kind of here. But I observe that's not 
explicitly named as a first order thing in the protocol. I also, we, we were kind of going back and forth on what does it mean to have a SPICE protocol? Uh, and I, I think the analog here is that's many, if not all of the OAuth kind of framework. And I think that that's also kind of implicit came out in SPICE. And I think we have the analog here in OAuth is like, we're actually describing profiles or describing how particular communities might use it. And that might be web here. It's clearly been used in, in other places kind of as well. So if we were to think about how to change the OAuth charter, I would at least maybe try to make some of these things first order because it's clear there's interest in continuing to evolve kind of jot. Uh, we don't say in the charter, that's good. There's probably continued evolution of OAuth kind of maintenance watching other key and successful ITF technologies. I'd hate not to have a working group to continue to evolve anything. I wouldn't want to have an issue or an excitement around extension come up and we'd be like, well, where do we put that? This technology is too important to leave that up to chance for that kind of frankly. So I'm not saying, you know, we, we need a kind of a new charter. It's just hearing how we talked about Spice and then at the mic here about creating d distinct lanes. So like you were talking kind of, or I, I might make things more, even more first order if we were to change the language. Thanks, Roman. Justin. Yeah, two bits. Uh, one is that uh, just because we've made certain decisions in the past, which we've now rehashed several times in this last few minutes, doesn't mean we need to keep making those decisions the same way going forward. And I think that this discussion about um, refocusing the OAuth charter uh, can help with that. I think that uh, Roman's suggestion of, you know, put Jot into the OAuth charter, sure. I mean, it ended up here through a weird political dance, but it's here. And so, you know, it, that would probably make sense to at least admit that that is now something that we should officially care about. Um, same thing with uh, SDJOT as a format for the document that makes a certain amount of sense. But this is the second bit. We should also be careful that uh, we're not so widely welcoming that anything that is vaguely and tangentially related to OAuth or related to the people who are working on OAuth uh, ends up in this working group. And I think that as a community, we've, we've done some amazing things together over the years. Absolutely proud of most of what we've done here. And, um, and I, I think we're going to continue to do that. But I think we need to be, we do need to be careful that it doesn't just come, become like, oh, this is the club of us and we do these things because we happen to be interested in it. And this is a forum that we know that we can dump this work onto if we, if we kind of put it in the right light to make it feel vaguely tangentially related to this thing called OAuth, which we're not even sure what that is anymore. Thanks, Justin. Paul. Hey, this is Paul. Uh, so I think in an ideal world, um, SDJOT and SDJOT VC, maybe status list belongs to Spice. I think it makes sense to gather all these data formats into one group. I can understand that. Uh, on the other hand, I like we want to issue government credentials in IDAS, and there is a particular time trouble around this. And I highly appreciate the expertise on the OAuth group and the reputation that comes with it. I think that SDJOT and SDJOT VC is the best candidate that we have, partly because of the expertise of the OAuth group. So I'm a bit hesitant to pull them out now because the IDAS process is highly, how do you say that, um, volatile and um, until these things are not settled down, I have the fear that if we're pulling these specifications out of OAuth into something new that is not established, does not have as big as a reputation as OAuth and might, have, might need some time to find itself, um, mm -hmm. I think is dangerous. Uh, so I think it's a good idea, but maybe the time is not right yet. Thank you. OK. Um, I've closed the mic because we have one presentation to go. So sorry, guys. Sorry, Dennis and, and Mike.
Um, to summarize, like it seems, hold on a second. Okay, so, so the quick summary is for what we've heard so far is that um, we think that the documents that we've adopted so far, those documents should stay here. I don't think anybody is arguing for them to be moved somewhere else. Honestly, there is no place <laughs> either way. So that, that's nobody's ready to, to take those anyway. Uh, but there is room for maybe improvement in that auth charter to include things that we've delivered in the past and maybe something around things that we're doing right now. So that's my our summary here. And anything that you think we missed here, that's that a fair summary. And then maybe we can work on that charter and kind of adjust it and, and make sense of it. Ori. Yeah. No, you, you, you closed. Ori's no, statement. no, this is, this is, I'm asking you to provide feedback here. So, so but I'm going to close it quickly because I, I want to echo what Paul said. Um, this group has a reputation, whether you invite people to bring their token format thing that has identity related uh, protocol parameters embedded in it. If you invite them here or not, they're still gonna want to bring it here because they know the people who are here, they're gonna send it to the list, they're gonna ask for reviews. So I, I think just a combination of, of what, what you said and what, what Mike Jones said, is it's necessary to have the charter reflect the reality of what you get from review here. Okay. That's it. Okay, thank you. Um, let's close this and, and uh, we'll continue that think about how we want to kind of adjust that, that charter. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, let me close this here. And um, Dr. Jones. <laughs> uh, yeah. Go ahead. Thank you. Yes, hello everybody. Um, I'm going to talk about SDJord and uh, the changes that we did since the last ITF. Next slide, please. Uh, we, this is in this case, Christina, Brian, and me. Uh, next slide. Um, so, SDJord, um, we, um, so I'm not going to the details here, obviously, because we only have uh, 10 minutes time. So uh, what, what changed since last time? Uh, we had one bigger normative change, um, a change in the format of SD draw. Um, I'll go into the details uh, in the next slides, um, but the idea is that um, there's a new hash in one of the artifacts that ensures that the presentation um, integrity um, is ensured. Then we... Um, did a lot of work around um, making the spec more clear and restructuring it a bit. Um, in the previous, um, uh, previous iterations, um, we um, added some features, we rewrote some sections, but um, there was need for a bigger restructuring in the spec to ensure that it, um, the concepts are explained well um, and that the example is in the right place. So this is what we did. Um, we also obviously got a bit of editorial feedback, like um, using more precise wording um, with some of the things. Um, and um, we did some smaller um, normative changes as well, um, but, but they don't affect the format. Um, so for example, we um, there was a, a specific place in the algorithm defining the verification. Um, so we, we ensured that um, if you have a claim in the SD draw that and controls the validity of the SD draw that it is actually checked after decoding the payload. Um, and we also clarified that our special reserved claim names um, or strings 
NSD drought um, must not be used anywhere else, um, which is the underscore SD and the dot, dot, dot. Um, both, uh, both of these are used to express um, uh, specific structures in SD droughts. Um, then a couple of other uh, changes as well. Um, we uh, found some, some minor issues in the examples that we fixed. Uh, we added an IANA media type registration for um, the JSON serialization. Um, we added uh, these drought claims, underscore SD and dot, 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 to the uh, registration requests in the spec. And we also made a couple of changes around the two sections that we have that discuss the optional JSON serialization and um, the section talking about enveloping SD droughts. Um, both of these sections contain very little normative uh, wording. The idea is just to give um, relatively open-ended guidance to, to how uh, to, to handle or to encode um, SD droughts also using the draught JSON serialization and how to, um, if, if you need to wrap an SD draught, how to do that. Um, so coming back to that format change that we have, I'd like to um, spend two slides on that. Next one, please. Next one. Um, this is a slide that is familiar to those that um, uh, watch one of the earlier presentations on SD draught. Um, in the top part, you see what the issuer creates, that is the SD draught, so the issuer signed draught that contains um, the plain text claims plus the hashes of the so-called disclosures uh, for those claims that can be selectively disclosed. And on the right side, the disclosures, um, which are just base64 um, encoded JSON arrays that contain a salt, a claim name, and claim value. Um, this is what the issuer issues, only the first part is signed. Uh, this is then sent to the holder or the wallet. Um, and then in the bottom part, uh, you see what happens when the holder wants to present that to some verifier. Um, the holder obviously sends the issue assigned part, the SD draught, plus a selected um, uh, subset of the disclosures, um, plus a so-called holder binding draught, um, or it used to be called holder binding draught. The idea is that you have, um, you take a nonce, an audience, so transaction specific values, and the holder signs these um, using a private key for which the matching public key was um, attested to in the SD draw by the issuer. So the holder proves possession of a key um, or control over a key um, by signing transaction specific values. Now the thing is, um, those three things are um, relatively disconnected. Um, obviously the holder binding draw must belong to the uh, same key that is uh, attested to an SD draught. The disclosures must belong to the SD draught, but the whole artifact um, is not protected. I don't think that is a big problem. Um, usually it's transferred over a secure channel and even if an attacker can modify it, usually the, the, only, like, the only real attack would be removing some of the disclosures. Um, so not super critical. Also, um, we got a lot of questions about this attack, but it's, um, it, it used to be not really clear what the, um, like what this could lead to in, in real world applications. Um, I take questions afterwards if, that, if that's fine. Um, so what we did, next slide please. We introduced a new artifact or new um, value that's called underscore SD underscore hash. And that is just the hash value, um, the hash over everything that precedes the holder binding jot or key binding jot as it is called now. Um, so the holder creates the, the jot, um, puts the hash uh, of the SD jot and the selected disclosures into it. And this can be verified. So we have an integrity protection over the whole presentation, um, obviously as long as the, the key binding jot um, is, is also checked by the verifier. Okay, so that's the normative change that we have. Uh, and we, um, we made that um, a required, uh, so you, you have to do it. Uh, it's not optional, so uh, we don't need to discuss about like interoperability or um, in which cases you should use it or in which cases you, you shouldn't use it. 
Next slide, please. This is what it looks like um, on the wire, so to say. Um, the red part is VSD drawed. The green part below that is the disclosures. And the blue part is the key binding drawed. And in the key binding drawed body, you see the underscore SD underscore hash, which is the hash over everything that is red or green. OK, next one, please. Uh, next steps for our specification. Um, we got a couple of comments um, that we're discussing on the mailing list, uh, as you probably saw. Uh, Neil made comments on the cryptography um, of the whole thing. I think we're closing in on um, um, on actually writing spec text for that and um, hopefully addressing the issues in the next uh, spec version. Um, also, I don't expect any formal changes to come out of that, but it um, will probably result in new um, consideration, like security advice, security considerations. Um, we've got a couple of issues on the issue tracker. Nothing too major in there. Um, um, yeah, so essentially things that we need to clarify or things that we need to um, um, address, but not in the core format. Um, I think the um, format, so the format except for the hash, um, the rest of the SD draw um, has been mostly stable or has been really stable for quite some time now, actually. Um, and we don't have any issues open, or we haven't heard of any issues that would introduce breaking changes. We got a couple of implementations already, um, nine implementations last that I counted, probably there are a couple of ones that we don't even know about. Um, so um, yeah, and people start using this. Um, so it would be good if we um, could have, like, if we as a working group think that this is stable, I think it would be good if we um, could think about a working group last call sometime uh, in the future once we have addressed these, these things listed here on the slide. Okay. Thank you. Okay, Ron. Yeah, uh, I was just gonna, if, if, if you're interested, a, a use case for how a, a practical attack that would motivate this SD hash. Yes, please. So in Mimi, we have this architecture where you have, you could have a client going, you know, client, server, 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 client, because you're going through multiple providers. And so in this case, the local provider could see a request and could snip out disclosures and could add disclosures that are from you that are valid that, from, that, that, from that one works, request. Sorry? So I could have one request, you know, one message that, that had, uh, you know, a set of disclosures, let's say nearly a full set of disclosures that I was disclosing to one party could remember yeah. those, snip them out, and then could paste them in to a request going right. to other providers. So as long another. as it's all based on the same issue assigned part. Exactly. And yeah. one party that could be potentially malicious sees or can manipulate um, multiple messages passing through. And yes, that's. Uh, yeah, and, and yeah. then like, since we're talking, you know, big tech companies that do advertising, this is not an unrealistic thing right. that they might right. want to do. Sure, yeah. So, um, I mean, that's, that's why we added the hash in the end. Um, because we thought it's uh, it's useful to have, even if the attacks were not that clear to us. Like, obviously, we understood that there are Sorry. attacks, but yeah. Oh, oh no, you, you go ahead. It was my mistake here. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, I'm almost certain you covered this on the list, but I'm just blanking on it now. There's uh, potentially, I guess, an agility mismatch in the hash algorithm used for the protecting the entire envelope versus the one used in the redaction digest sort of process. Yep. Um, I thought, I think you, you, you how, did, how do you uh, uh, basically prevent people from having, having to implement multiple hash algorithms to obtain this security feature? Um, I think we haven't decided on that yet. So um, I don't know yet, uh, but it's one of the issues, I think 359 oh. or 360, oh, I'm not sure it's, it's one of them. So that, that would also be, if you have an idea, that would be a, the best place to. Um... Uh, I do have an idea. Um, you, should, you should lock it to the same scheme that the issuer committed to. So that for, yeah. for any given issued token that relies on a fixed hash, and that's always, that's mandatory already, yeah. that the holder is like basically bound by that scheme. And then, you know, you still have the uh, hash agility issue. Multiple issuers yep. could could still decide they like different hash algorithms, but at least the holder doesn't get to pick a different one. I think that makes sense. 
that's what it says now, doesn't it? Doctor? Say again, sorry, I didn't understand. That's exactly what it says now. Christina? Yeah. Um, uh, right, you, I, I, wait. Anyway, let's discuss uh, later. Yeah, no, I, I, I think I think I think Brian's right because the the hash is expressed in the issuer assigned job, and so uh, it's whatever the issuer says and can't be changed. Um, so if I if I understand the draft correctly, that's it. It's, it's we're already okay from the perspective of Ori race. Um, but I, I think you'd to, to say a couple things. Um, so I'm fairly new to this draft, but uh, picked it up over the weekend and tried to implement it. Um, and overall, yeah, I, I concur with the assessment here that this is getting pretty good for working group last call. I like a lot of the SC hash stuff that you were just talking about. The major thing that I was concerned about with this is the inclusion of key binding because it seemed like a pretty orthogonal thing from uh, selective disclosure. So it's on the one hand, not all that connected to the selective disclosure. And on the other hand, um, seems useful without selective disclosure. Like if you have an, a, a JOT with a CNF claim, then it's useful to have key binding um, when you present that job. Um, so my major suggestion for this draft would be to kind of slice that key binding stuff out and put it elsewhere so it's more reusable. Um, but other than that, it, it looks pretty good. Um, question I had for you is um, whether there's been any formal modeling on the key binding house, because clearly, um, as, as you're talking about, there's some subtleties to how exactly this whole thing gets bound together. Um, seems like a domain where formal, a formal model would not be too complicated and would help, could help find some corner cases. But overall, just to cap that off, like plus one, so to getting this to work in your class. Um, so regarding the first thing, um, or actually regarding both um, things that you mentioned, um, I think the key binding mechanism, it is extremely simple. I mean, it's a signed draught. Um, so I think it is, the, it is good to have that in SD draught because it will be like it is, closely connected to the use cases that you use selective disclosure for, I think in most use cases, you will want to have some kind of key binding. So it's good to have that um, in the SD draw spec itself. It's also relatively simple. Um, if you take that out and put it into a different, like in a separate spec, I think the, there wouldn't be much to specify. It's a job. Um, you put two claims into it, um, or three in this case. And actually, the third claim is closely connected to the data format that you're using. So it's closely connected to SD draught. Um, so I'm wondering if there's, like, if this mechanism is not too simple to pull it out, uh, treat it in a different spec. OK, um, we're, we're almost out of word, time, yeah. Just Go one ahead. word. Um, having done quite a bit of formal analysis, I think analyzing key binding draught would be extremely boring. Um, so I don't expect that to be much to formally analyze, to be honest. OK, Tristan. Uh, yeah, so I'm Tristan. I'm from Spruce. Um, I'm one of those uh, uh, implementations of SDJOT that hasn't been published. Um, or I'm not, but I, I wrote one. Uh, <laughs> Please send us the link. <laughs> yeah, 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 no, definitely. Um, the So we, we did run into a few issues internally while reviewing it around um, some of the more complex uh, constructions with um, like a recursive SD jot with multiple claims of the same digest and that kind of thing. And while the mailing list was great at sort of telling us what y'all's thoughts on it were and what your intentions were, um, the fact that it was sort of unclear to us, you know, from the spec was sort of an issue. And so I guess I was wondering where would you guys like to see um, uh, clarifications like would you like to see negative examples in the spec would you like to see um pull requests against like a, your, your python re version is sort of a canonical representation almost um where do those clarifications probably live um i think it's one of the issues that we have on the track i'm not quite sure um at least it's one of the issues that i have on the back of my mind to fix um because mm -hmm. those questions came up i think also independently um from somebody else, it's a clarification that we need to do in the spec first, mm -hmm. um, where we say, okay, if you encounter this condition, uh, this this is invalid, right? Um, 
and um, then the Python implementation follows. If you want, um, a pull request is very welcome for the, for the spec. If you think um, um, you can do that, that would be great. Okay, I, we're out of time, sorry. Okay. Uh, David, we, I closed the queue, but do you have a quick comment? Uh, sure, so I, and I assume people can hear me. The, um, just like we had a profile for JOTS for use for access token, I can see us eventually probably sooner than later, having a profile of how to use SD jots within OAuth. At that point, the uh, uh, key binding here actually would be an alternative to DPOP. And you could, uh, squinting through a lens, think that uh, the reason we didn't do it that way is because we didn't have a token that we could say, this is where it goes. Uh, but uh, access token that was an SD jot, we could actually say this is how proof of possession works. And it winds up using a lot of DPOP again in defining what that token contains. Okay. Um, thank you, David. Brian, are you trying to say something as a co author? No, I'm sorry. Never mind me. Okay. We're over time. Okay. Awesome. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. See you tomorrow. <laughs> yeah.